Paul Rudd rates pretty high on the list of universally likable Hollywood actors. While he's most synonymous with Marvel's Ant-Man franchise, this movie star's career has spanned several decades as well as multiple genres. Here's the truth about Paul Rudd. Is Paul Rudd dead? <laughs> yes. Rod's appearance on the PBS show Finding Your Roots in 2017 provided an illuminating look at the actor's heritage and the origins of his family surname, which his grandfather changed from Rudnitsky to Rudd in order to secure work in England. Rudd explained, I think the way I heard it was, they all decided to change their name to Rudd. They couldn't get work because no one was hiring Jews in London. Being Jewish, was a bit of a, an anomaly in the town that I lived in and the school that I went to. Having reflected on the anti-Semitism he's faced throughout his own life, Rudd explained that he's an Ashkenazi Jew, adding, I certainly feel as if being Jewish is in the marrow of my bones. While Rudd was born and raised in the United States, his parents originally hailed from England. Due to the family's close ties across the pond, The Guardian noted Rudd visited often. He told the outlet, I've always felt genuinely at home here, just from the little things. As a kid, I was elated I could get all the chocolates I never could get back in the States. According to CBS News, it was Rudd's late father's fascination with British iconic vessel the Titanic that led Rudd to audition for Leonardo DiCaprio's role in the 1997 movie. Rudd told GQ in 2009, That was the one part I really, really wanted for my dad. You never know what hand you're going to get dealt next. You learn to take life as it comes at you. According to the magazine, Rudd's dad had a basement full of Titanic memorabilia and was an official member of the Titanic Historical Society. While speaking with Grantland in 2011, Rudd revealed a surprising secret about himself. He used to model his look after Adam Ant. According to the v &A blog, the English singer was as well known for his new wave tunes as he was for his eclectic style. Especially in the 80s when he wore romantic, pirate-inspired looks along with face paint and messy hair. I had a pair of pleated pants that actually had pleats in the, in the ass. Like pleats in the front and the back. Rudd told the outlet, Puberty hit me like a Mack truck, and my hair went from straight to curly overnight. But it was an easier pill to swallow because Adam Ant had curly hair. I used to ask my mum to try and shave my head on the sides to give me a receding hairline because Adam Ant had one. I didn't know what a receding hairline was. I just thought he looked cool. One Hollywood star who's shared a long-time connection with Rudd is none other than Mad Men's John Hamm. Back when Rudd was just 18, the duo even crushed over the same woman. However, Hamm was way too much competition for him. Rudd remembered playing Trivial Pursuit with Hamm, later telling Vanity Fair, He seemed like a good-looking, athletic guy who possessed qualities I did not possess. John would want to go right to yellow, which was history, and I was like, oh great, this guy is smart too. They would ask a question like, what is the largest lake in Africa? And John immediately went, Lake Victoria. I felt so emasculated in the game that, as a result, I started reading atlases. We've still fought now 30 years going, <laughs> so that person's name is Paul Rudd. Of course, Rudd and Ham would go on to become good friends. In an interview with TV Line in 2011, Ham even revealed that he avidly followed Rudd's work, saying, I think that Paul's career has been really fun for me to watch because he's been able to do stuff on Broadway and he's been able to do big movies and big comedies and produce stuff and really kind of be the architect of his own future. And it's been really successful for him. Some fans may not realize that the ever-youthful Rudd has been married since 2003 and met his now wife on his very first day in New York City after moving there to work in the theater. According to Nylon Guys, When Rudd arrived in the city, he went straight to his publicist's office with his luggage. As he was late for an audition, a girl working there offered to drop off his bags at his friend's apartment. A few days later, hardly knowing anyone in the city, Rudd asked the girl, Julie Yeager, if she would like to get lunch. And the rest, as they say, is history. The two got hitched in 2003, and Good Housekeeping reports they welcomed their son Jack in 2004 and daughter Darby five years later. When I told my own son that I was going to be in a superhero movie, 
he asked me what it was. I said, I would be playing Ant-Man. And he said, what? When the actor received his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2015, he was accompanied by his wife and their two children. Jaeger, who's since moved from working in publicity to screenwriting, wrote the 2017 movie Fun Mom Dinner, which her husband produced and starred in. Be cool if you didn't say anything, just because it's, you know, it's very illegal. Sounds good. Rod told Elle of his private family life, I don't think I'm going to sell a lot of tabloids. I identify myself as a parent and a husband way more than somebody who rides around on the back of an ant. While Rudd's performance as Josh, the stepbrother and eventual love interest of Alicia Silverstone's share in Clueless catapulted him into the spotlight, he wasn't so sure he should take the job. Are you saying you care about me? Josh... He told Entertainment Weekly in 2012, When I read the script, it took me a while to get it. I remember thinking, ugh, because I'd been reading so many pilots and bad versions of teen movies. It wasn't until I got many pages into it that I thought, this is actually smart. Rudd could have easily passed up the opportunity to star in one of the most beloved flicks of the 90s. But while it's hard to imagine anyone other than Rudd playing dreamy, plaid shirt-wearing Josh, the actor instead hoped to nab the role of Christian, the James Dean-esque heartthrob that Cher initially develops a crush on. Uh oh as if. He added, I thought Justin Walker's character Christian was a really good part. It was a cool idea, something I'd never seen in a movie before. The cool gay kid. Clueless opened in July 1995, but Rudd's first movie was actually Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. Halloween 6. I can't believe I don't know the full title. The sixth installment of the popular horror franchise wasn't released until that September, by which time the actor had already made an impression on audiences as a comedic actor. Rudd told Ain't It Cool News of the Halloween installment in 2007, That was the very first movie I'd ever done, and I'm really thrilled that I was able to do it. There was something trippy about working on a Halloween movie and seeing Michael Myers and seeing that face that I'd seen in movies and meet George Wilbur, who played him. I want you to watch your house. You can see everything from that window. Who am I supposed to be looking for? Him. However, scoring a role in the famously campy horror franchise was nerve-wracking for the young actor, who admitted, When I first saw Halloween 6, I remember thinking, oh god, this movie's not good, and I was really kind of bummed out. While he initially worried about getting future work or whether people would think he was a joke, Rudd has since gotten over any embarrassment. He said, I'm honored to be part of a franchise that has lasted that long, that has that many devotees. And I couldn't be happier that I can say that my first movie is a Halloween movie. A few years into his acting career, Rudd gave Shakespeare a try. While he appeared as Juliet's betrothed Dave Paris in Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet in 1996, the actor went on to play Duke Orsino in the Lincoln Center Theatre's production of Twelfth Night two years later. Rudd told Ain't It Cool News, That was certainly the biggest, most visible Shakespeare play I'd ever done. I did a program that was all kinds of Elizabethan theatre, Jacobean drama and stuff. And that was Nicholas Heitner who directed Twelfth Night that also directed me in Object of My Affection opposite Jennifer Aniston, so I'd worked with him before. While his experience as a Shakespearean actor had a major impact on his craft, Rudd's performance unfortunately received a pretty brutal review from the New York Times, which noted, Rudd has a good time posing as an eternally bare-chested poseur. But it's a one-note, if exuberantly realized, performance that doesn't let Orsino grow from false love into the real thing. Director Heitner, however, was much more impressed with Rudd's abilities, telling Elle in 2011, You can't play Shakespeare without the emotional and intellectual volatility he brings to everything he does. In addition to being a prolific performer, Rudd co-created the cult TV sitcom Party Down. Starring a number of then lesser-known comedic actors like Adam Scott, Jane Lynch and Lizzie Kaplan, the show followed a group of caterers who were attempting to pursue their semi-dried-up Hollywood dreams. According to IndieWire, Rudd acted in the pilot but eventually dropped out due to other projects. If music is the food of love, play it. I'm way into Shakespeare. Yeah? Yeah, I'm an actor. 
Despite its all-star cast and crew, the Stars series was sadly short-lived and ran for two seasons before being cancelled in 2010. While speaking with the Miami New Times that year, Rudd said he was bummed about the cancellation, admitting, It's frustrating in that I feel like people were kind of starting to discover that show. At the same time, so many of my favourite shows had 12 episodes, so it's not that bad. As for his other behind-the-scenes endeavours, Rudd produced the 2012 movie Wonderlust, in which he starred opposite Jennifer Aniston. You ready for your meeting? Yep. Knock him dead, all right? I'll call you later. He's also written on multiple scripts. He co-wrote the 2008 comedy Role Models, in which he co-starred with Sean William Scott and Elizabeth Banks, and earned screenwriting credits on 2015's Ant-Man and 2018's Ant-Man and the Wasp, proving the impressive influence he's had on his character. I'm Ant-Man. I know. It wasn't my idea. There's a certain tradition Rudd performs whenever he goes on Conan that he just can't seem to quit. Under the ruse of sharing a sneak peek at whatever movie he's promoting at the time with Conan O'Brien, the actor has instead shown a clip from the 1988 movie Mac and Me. I throw to what I think is a clip, and it turns out to be a clip from this terrible E.T. ripoff. For those who don't know, the movie follows Mac, a mysterious alien creature, and a boy named Eric, who befriends him and just so happens to use a wheelchair. The clip in question involves Eric's wheelchair accidentally rolling off a cliff. Let's take a look at this clip uh, from Anchorman 2. Anchorman 2. Two. Rod explained to the Kermode and Mayo show in 2017. I set up a clip. I, you know, they cut to a clip. And so I set up the clip and then I just showed the clip from Mac and me with the kid going off the cliff in the wheelchair. I went back again to promote something else. It was like the last episode of Friends. He claimed they set up the clip very seriously, but of course. And then just showed that Mac and me clip. Rudd's ongoing prank, which he even worked into an Ant-Man clip, is nothing short of legendary and has even inspired other guests to play the same joke on Conan. Prior to making millions as a beloved A-lister, Rudd worked a number of odd jobs, including that of a bat mitzvah DJ. While the actor has mentioned the former gig in a number of interviews over the years, writer Gabrielle Berkner revealed in an op-ed for Forward that he was her DJ, writing... Rudd, donning a yellow tuxedo jacket, a ruffled shirt, shorts and Doc Martens, ably and energetically led us through all of the bat mitzvah staples. Candle lighting, Coke and Pepsi, toasts, limbo, hands up, hala cutting and YMCA. I hadn't done a Marvel movie yet, so I was still treating people pretty well. As showcased in Berkner's video, it's clear Rudd has always had that upbeat attitude, easy likability, and penchant for putting on a good show. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.